InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight, and it's Thursday, September 26, 2013. Here are our top stories. Tonight, the FBI denies that Aaron Alexis was a victim of ELF technology. Then, how secret 3G Intel chips give a back door to your PC. And the NSA claims it trolls your phone to keep you safe. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. It knows all your medical conditions, your history, where you eat, what size and color underwear your wife wears, what type of sex you're into. Well, the inscription on Aaron Alexis's gun, My ELF Weapon, has caused quite a stir about research that's been out in the open for decades, but has largely gone unnoticed by the public. So the FBI decided that they needed to push back. In this article, the FBI gave a statement saying that there was an electronic document from Alexis that said, ultra low frequency attack is what I've been subject to for the last three months. And to be perfectly honest, that's what's driven me to this. They just dismissed that by saying he was delusional. But as we pointed out, Satanist and high-ranking NSA official Michael Aquino pointed out 33 years ago in his document, Mind War, that ELF was very useful for harassing and controlling people, as well as making a connection to the Navy Yard, where the ELF program is also used for submarines. And what was also different about this and indicating that it wasn't just simple schizophrenia or natural uh, schizophrenia was that it was a sudden onset late in life. He was hearing voices of people that he thought were harassing him, not the voice of God or Satan, and especially sleep deprivation. Take a look at this clip from a new film by Take Back Your Power. They show people that are exposed to smart meters, and these are pictures before. After they're exposed to just two minutes of standing close by a smart meter, you see abnormal cell conditions in the first two subjects. The third subject was a female who could only stay there for 45 seconds. It still caused clotting, gave her headaches, and those are the symptoms that we see people complaining about frequently with smart meters. So you can see a dramatic difference in the effect on blood cells with just two minutes of exposure, and in the one case, only 45 seconds of exposure. Now you can see more about that documentary at InfoWarsStore.com. We sell the DVD, Take Back Your Power, a very powerful film that will educate you about the very real effects on your health and your family's health with smart meters. Now what we didn't show, but what happens right after they show the effect on blood cells of the smart meters, there's an Apple, former Apple executive, who talks about how they use the term smart meters as simply a marketing ploy. He says, very clever to do that, because if you criticize a smart meter, you're obviously dumb. He says he calls them dangerous meters. It's a very good documentary. Check it out at InfoWarsStore.com. So we know that there are real physiological effects of microwave radiation on people. We've had research that has talked about how companies and how various military organizations have research projecting communications into people's heads. The Army calls it their voice-to-skull program, or DARPA calls it a sonic projector. The Marines, of course, have their directed energy beam weapons, the Medusa project. And there's a lot of weapons of mass control, as I like to call them, as they talk about them being non-lethal weapons, but they're weapons that they know have very severe physiological effects on people. Now, Aaron Alexis was a technician who worked in this area. He worked with defense contractors. He had been in the military, and he may have known, may have been warned about the physiological effects of exposure to this, but he certainly knew that he was being harassed, and he knew the source of this harassment. For the FBI to just dismiss this as delusional is not credible. We know that there are real physiolo physiological effects. We saw that with the smart meters. We know that they've been researching these programs for decades. The only question is, are they morally capable of doing it? Well, of course they are. They think they're on a noble mission. Look at what the NSA surveillance boss just said about this. He said that, the NSA has defined U.S. surveillance programs as part of a noble mission to protect the nation and that any reports about what they're doing are simply sensationalized. Keith Alexander, the head of the NSA, said that not only was their no mission noble, but that reports about what they're doing have been sensationalized. Well, there is absolutely nothing about a secret shadow government that is breaking the law. He's lied to Congress. He and James Clapper have lied to Congress about what they're doing. They're breaking the law. They're simply criminals who don't think they're subject to the law. And we've seen how the NSA is using PRISM in conjunction with large internet companies 
But you're not even safe if you stay away from the internet. We now learn that there are backdoors even in your computer processor. Take a look at this clip from Intel talking about their new generation of processors. Unlike software-only solutions that require PCs to be powered on and software agents running on a fully functional OS, a hardware-assisted approach enables PCs to be managed regardless of system state and without requiring software agents. The result? IT or IT service providers can diagnose and fix problems without a desk side visit, schedule PCs to power down at night to cut energy costs, and still have the ability to power them up for off-hours patching. So Intel reported about that, but it went, again, largely unnoticed. But in this article we have today on InfoWars, secret 3G Intel chip gives Snoop's backdoor PC access. It points out that the Intel Core vPro processors contain a secret 3G wireless chip that allows remote disabling and backdoor access to any computer, even if it's turned off. And that's because it uses the system's phantom power. So it can individually turn on hardware components and it can access anything on your computer and it allows third parties to do this. And that video that you just saw, Intel is bragging about how it can be used for system management. And of course, like any technology, it can be used for good purposes or for bad purposes. But we've already seen how the NSA uses all the technology that it gets for evil purposes, for spying on people. It points out that the webcams can also be remotely accessed. So any third party, and you can bet that an interested third party is going to be the NSA. And as a former NSA director said just 10 days ago, they want to see our internet, he wants to see our internet look more like China's. He said it's too much like the Wild West. Well, you know what? In the Wild West, in America's frontier past, we had respect for individual liberty, not in China. If the government in China doesn't like what you're saying, they can grab you and force you to confess your crimes in public. Well, it's not just internet dissenters that they're cracking down on in China. Of course, they crack down on people who are dissenting apart from the internet, people who are speaking out about human rights violation against forced abortions. Now we're seeing the same pattern in the United States and in the UK, where they're going after dissenters and shutting them down or preventing them from speaking. The U.S. government prevented drone strikes victims from meeting with Congress, claims a lawyer. This was a fellow named Shazad Akbar, and he's with the Pakistan-based Foundation for Fundamental Rights, and he's a legal fellow with Reprieve, a British human rights group. He told The Guardian he was barred from entering the United States. He says, it's not like my name is scratched because there's some sort of confusion. My name is blocked. Before I started drone investigations, I never had an issue with the U.S. V with visas. In fact, I had a diplomatic visa for two years. Now, while he was blocked from entering, the U.K. detained and harassed another person who was speaking, about, speaking out about human rights violations with drones. He was from Yemen. So this fellow, the first fellow was from Pakistan. The second one was from Yemen. And we see this happening with both the UK and with the US going after dissenters. Also in the Guardian article, it pointed out top secret US government documents obtained by the Guardian from NSA whistleblower Ed Snowden characterize even the most basic political and legal opposition to drone attacks as part of propaganda campaigns from America's quote, adversaries. That's what the NSA thinks of you. The document is titled Nationality of Target versus Due Process. And it says attacks against American and European persons who have become violent extremists are often characterized by propagandists arguing that lethal action against these individuals deprives them of due process. Well, when you kill American citizens without due process, that's simply assassination. It used to be something that the CIA denied and tried to distance themselves from. Now they don't have any problem with it. Obama's got his drone strike list. And it's not propaganda to point this out. They don't have, and, and it is propaganda to say that al-Awlaki was violent. He was not engaged in an active shooting war. He was merely assassinated. He was someone who was advocating violent things, but he was writing. He was not a soldier in a hot war, which is like they, the way that they wanted to portray it. But think about it, they also killed his son, his 16-year-old son, who was not doing anything, and many, many innocent people. That's what these human rights advocates from Yemen and Pakistan who want to speak out about this are denied from being able to speak out because they're blocked from even entering the country. They're detained and harassed in the UK and they're blocked from entering the United States by the State Department. Our government is literally unaccountable. As this next story points out, 
That certainly is true of the IRS. We have a IRS watchdog says that $67 million is missing from Obamacare slush fund. The IRS is unable to account for $67 million spent from a slush fund established for Obamacare implementation, according to Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration. That's a report that was released today. So they can account for $67 million and they won't be held accountable for it. Nobody is going to go to jail for this. This is the kind of corruption. This is the kind of out of control government that we're talking about. You see it in every instance. Well, stay tuned. Right after the break, we're going to be coming up with a report from Dan Bedondi. He's gone around and looked at it was Rhode Island where the shooter first started hearing voices. And he's showing us the close proximity of where he stayed in these hotels. He was moving from one hotel to the other to try to avoid this harassment. And he shows you how close they are in proximity to defense contractors as well as to DARPA. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned. Jones Channel is the official page of the Info War, but don't miss what's happening on our other channels. The Info Warrior, with the week's best videos. Prison Planet Live, where Paul Joseph Watson gives his expert analysis. And keep up with the rest of the Info Wars crew on our other pages. All of our videos are available to repost for educational purposes. See the sidebar of the Alex Jones channel for the subscription links. And remember, you can always find our videos in the highest quality by becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. Welcome back. As we reported earlier in the news, it was confirmed today that the Navy Yard shooter believed that he was under electronic harassment. Now, of course, the FBI spokesman just dismissed that as delusional. But we talked about how there's been many, many programs by various government agencies and military industrial complex to do just that, to electronically harass people. And it was a week ago today that we had Dr. John Hall come on the radio show and interview with Alex and explain exactly the difference between schizophrenia and electronic harassment, the late onset in life of hearing voices in your head, the sudden onset of it happening, not hearing the voice of God, but believing that you're being harassed by other people, by multiple people, and of course, insomnia. Insomnia was what he went to the VA for. First he went to the police and complained about harassment, then he went to the VA, got trazodone for insomnia, then five days later he went to another VA hospital and got even more trazodone. Nobody believed him. They believed that he was schizophrenic, but these are all the classic signs of electronic harassment. Now, to give a physical context to this situation, Dan Bedondi went to Rhode Island and he looked at where Aaron Alexis was staying. He moved hotels three different times, but he was right in the middle of several military industrial complex contractors as well as DARPA. Dan Bedondi reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News. And we're in Middletown, Rhode Island, at the Residence Inn, where the alleged Navy Yard shooter, Aaron Alexis, stayed, and then he claimed to hear voices in his room through the walls. If I put a voice that's foreign to your normal thought pattern in your head, that becomes harassment. And the harassment over time will make you display signs of schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. When you go and tell people that you're hearing voices, we've been patterned to turn key see that as schizophrenia and not even look to see if there's a legitimate source for it. Now we're at the second hotel where Aaron Alexis stayed at here in Newport, Rhode Island at the Marriott. Now we spoke to the manager who refused to give comments, but this is the very hotel where he said the walls were vibrating and he heard voices in his head and he was being followed. And this is also the same hotel where he made a report to the Newport police about people following him and strange noises. Now we're in front of the Newport Rhode Island Police Department where Aaron Alexis made a report of people following him and strange noises in his room. There was no public information officer to talk to us today, but however, we did obtain a police report by Aaron Alexis and the Newport Police Department. Right behind me in Portsmouth, Rhode Island, 
is Raytheon, a defense contract company for the government. Now, this is just mere miles away from Middletown and Newport, Rhode Island, both hotels where Aaron Alexis stayed. Now, Aaron Alexis carved ELF into his rifle in capitals, which we believe to stand for extremely low frequency. Now, extremely low frequency is used in mind control and tectonic weapons as admitted in H.R. 2977, the Space and Preservation Act in 2001 that never passed. Now, could there be a huge connection between DARPA, Raytheon, and Aaron Alexis? We will soon find out. And this is Dan Badanti reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, if there's any good that can come out of the Navy Yard shooting, it may be that the public finally wakes up to these weapons of mass control, the so-called non-lethal weapons that the U.S. military industrial complex has been researching and developing for many decades. It's something that many people have talked about. It's something that we saw in the Church Commission. They talked about the MK Ultra programming, giving people altars using people as mind control assassins. is something that you'll also find more information about in State of Mind. It's a DVD that we sell here at InfoWarsStore.com, available exclusively on DVD and Blu-ray from InfoWarsStore.com. And if you want to deprogram yourself and help to deprogram others, get a subscription to Prison Planet TV. Just one subscription will allow you to watch all of our documentaries all of our news, as well as pass that on to 10 other people who can also watch the news simultaneously with you. We'll stick around after the break. Anthony Gucciardi is going to interview Dr. Group, and they're going to talk about hidden GMOs in natural supplements. Stay tuned. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Last March, I told you about the original Monsanto Protection Act, which shielded Monsanto, the biotech juggernaut, from legal action. So what could go on is Monsanto could literally go and plant a GMO crop admittedly linked to cancer, let's say, and we could do nothing about it. That was thrown in as a rider, which is a slimy way of throwing legislation into an overall bill. In that case, back in March, it was the Senate spending bill, which had nothing to do with the Monsanto Protection Act at all. But they threw it in anyway and were able to get away with it because they were slimy and Monsanto paid over $64,000 to a senator, Roy Blunt, who gave them the pen to write the legislation for themselves and block them from all forms of legal action. But now, we have actually achieved a major victory in defeating the renewal of this act. It was set to expire on September 30th, and now we've defeated a renewal of the Monsanto Protection Act 2.0 through activism and just massive outrage. I've covered this story, as you can see on screen, it has 21,000 shares on Facebook alone, seen by millions worldwide. And what we have seen now is so many people in the public are outraged over Monsanto outraged over the des destruction of the food supply, GMOs in the food supply, the disease machine that is Monsanto. They are losing the war. They may be winning battles, pumping millions into GMO labeling campaigns to defeat them, to defeat GMO labeling campaigns in Washington, but I'm joined with Dr. Edward Group today, 
an authority on GMOs, someone I also did the Monsanto Video Revolt with, which we received 150,000 people constantly watching our online stream where we just bashing Monsanto, destroying their stock prices. So we're going to talk today about a few different things. Number one, first and foremost, are you consuming GMOs in your natural products each morning? You know, those dietary supplements that you take, and I've, I've, hey, I was a victim of this as well. Are you accidentally consuming GMOs in your healthy supplements? That's first and foremost. So Dr. Group, thanks for speaking with us today. We're gonna get into how to avoid GMOs in your supplements, how to identify them, and you know, some telltale signs that you are actually, unfortunately, trusting a brand that is lying to you. So thanks for talking to us. Let's get into the GMO issue. The GMO issue, as you know, and as many people know, is a huge issue. And it, it goes further because you have to look at the damage and how GMOs affect the whole healthcare system. I mean, the damage done by GMOs, chronic allergies, eczema, psoriasis, skin conditions, what happens is the BT toxin, which is manufactured from the Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria, is inserted into the genes of the corn and the soy. And then when you eat it, it causes this toxin to be released inside your system and literally burns holes through your intestinal lining. And that means that all the toxins you're consuming in the toxic water supply, the air, the food, all that can leak directly into your bloodstream and slowly poison your body. No one would ever expect it would be in nutritional supplements though, until over a period of time, we've been doing research, you've been doing research, and what we found is the majority of protein powders the majority of pout, green food, superfood powders that you purchase from big retail stores, even purchase online, and the majority of supplements, such as you, what you would find in like CVS, pharmacies, Walgreens, stuff like that, supermarkets. These are very, very cheaply manufactured products. They're manufactured for pennies on the dollar. They contain... GMO ingredients, mostly from maltodextrin, dextrin, soy protein isolate, anything that can be derived from corn or soy that's not certified organic. And the thing about that is, is that we know the food supply has been overtaken by Monsanto. We know that corn on average, 96 plus percent, depending on the stats you look at, has been completely taken over and completely genetically modified. We know that soy, as you mentioned, is completely genetically modified. But there are, of course, non-GMO certified alternatives in the natural products industry that you can go and say, okay, this is not GMO. But the biggest issue we've both seen in developing products and developing things that are not uh, containing GMOs is that these providers, these big guys, these multi-million or sometimes billion providers, they wanna cut their costs so low and provide such garbage to the public that they will actually go ahead and say, yeah, you know, we try not to use GMOs, but yeah, they're in our products. So they won't even, they won't even spend a few extra cents to get a non-GMO certified crop in their products. And how many products on average do you think if you walk into a store, what percentage do you think contain GMO derivatives? Like 75%, 80, 90? I mean, if you walk in a normal grocery store, I mean, pretty much everything on the shelves is gonna be GMO, except for the outside corners where you're gonna find all your fruit and vegetables and stuff like that. The only high-end uh, nutraceutical companies, people, the, the sad thing is people have to find them because they're not gonna advertise and they're not gonna label that the product is GMO. You know, you have to search and you have to find companies like Global Healing Center, InfoWars Life, which is introducing their clean brand, GMO free brand. And so I think it's just education and letting people know that why we're winning the battle against Monsanto is because the people actually stood up and did something about it. The next thing is taking it to the next level when you're talking about your own healthcare and calling the supplement manufacturers, asking them for documentation, and taking a step yourself. Because if you don't try to protect yourself, nobody else will. Uh, I'm actually glad you mentioned that. For those of you who are not yet aware, myself and Dr. Group, you know, we've worked together, we've teamed up for a long time developing different formulations. And since I've started teaming up with Alex through StoryLeak and my website, Natural Society, now the third largest natural health website in the world, we decided, since Alex was on a journey, 
trying to find the best things for his family, for his children, to keep them safe in the event of disaster, to protect themselves and prepare themselves for what is ultimately coming, or also the effects of Fukushima, Chernobyl, the background radiation, the nuclear testing, the medical testing that are just spiking the background radiation levels uh, over double over the last 60 years. And we came to Dr. Group and we're looking through the formulations. What can we do? A super high powered nascent iodine was ultimately the answer that we came to to be the most effective and a bunch of other lines as well. It's now under the InfoWars Life brand and it's embodying everything we're saying right now. Essentially, it's a, a call to arms to the other supplement makers. It's a bottom line. It's, it's overall a campaign, campaign to resuscitate the dying health of this nation, to defeat the medical establishment tyranny over our bodies, the ownership of our bodies, the financial enslavement through these medical tyranny practitioners that are destroying your health and charging you for it. But at the same time, everything we sell through this, this InfoWars Life brand, the survival shield, the nascent iodine survival shield, certified non-GMO. We don't just say it's non-GMO, it's certified non-GMO. It is certified free of harmful additives. Dr. Group, tell us about the glycerin that we use. On average, these other companies are using glycerin from GMOs, and that's something to hold the actual iodine itself, the nascent iodine, because there are other nascent iodine, uh, items out there, but oftentimes contain GMOs, uh, toxic fillers. Tell us about that. Well, whenever you put anything into the body, you want it to be as clean as possible. And a lot of people are using tinctures, alcohol-based tinctures, and those alcohol-based tinctures usually come from GMO corn. And who wants to give their kid alcohol tinctures anyway? I mean, alcohol is a toxin to the body. So it's real important to look at all the aspects and the steps of manufacturing along the way. And what most people don't know, too, is that the majority of vitamin and supplement manufacturers these days are owned by the pharmaceutical companies. They're trying to buy up the good manufacturing nutraceutical companies and switch and put their ingredients in there and corrupt the whole system. I know we get offers to buy our company all the time, so it's, it's important to find a company and find someone who really cares about health because like you said, it's all about the bottom line. When you have shareholders you have to impress, the end consumer is the one that ends up suffering. If you can get a cheaper flow agent by using such a maltodextrin, which is GMO based, it might cost you a, a penny to run a thousand bottles, as opposed to using a natural organic flow agent like what we use being a organic gum acacia or something might cost 10 or 15, 20 cents, 20 times the amount, then a company that's focused on the shareholders and a company that's focused on profits is going to use the cheapest ingredients. They don't care how that's going to affect you in the future or how it's going to affect your health. It's exactly like the dying mainstream media whose trust is continually in decline, whose viewership is continually in decline. We're rising like a phoenix from the ashes, the real authentic media, along with these supplements from InfoWarsLife.com, Survival Shield. Check it out. Prepare yourself and your family. Get the five pack, get the 10 pack, and do what you need to do to protect yourself and restore your health from medical tyranny. Thanks a lot for joining us, Dr. Group. We can defeat this. I'm Anthony Gucciardi filling in for the InfoWars Nightly News, 7 p.m. Central Time. Tune in and be informed. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show.